Don't be afraid. Be strong. Take heart. Have courage. That little mantra that we spoke earlier in the service is found so many places in Scripture, again and again, with little variations of all kinds. But it always comes pointing to this one idea. There is something you fear, something difficult and dangerous, and you need to face it. This Lenten season, these weeks before Easter, it's all about facing fear, really. And facing fear always does bring us back to this word, courage. Every definition you find will say something like, courage is a capacity to choose to do something difficult or dangerous. That's simple enough. Courage is the capacity to do something difficult or dangerous. This thing we call courage makes it possible for us to step out or step back or stand tall or wait patiently or speak up or choose to be silent. What we need to do, why we need courage, well, I think it's different for every single person and many different circumstances. We may need courage to make a difficult decision or face a life-threatening illness or confess something important about ourselves. We may need to tell somebody no. We may need to tell somebody yes. We need courage to face something unknown or someone unknown. Sometimes we need courage just to do the next tiny step. Sometimes we need courage to stop. Pretty much everything that Jesus did and everything that Jesus taught required courage, and it still does. All the stories about the people around Jesus who seek him out for help, who choose to follow him, at the core, every single one of those is a story of courage. Now, we really can't say we want to be Jesus' followers unless we're prepared to follow, and that is going to take courage. I believe this thing that we call courage is what God offers us to face the fears that accompany this human existence, these difficult and dangerous things. Many courageous people would not agree with that, however. They would say, no, 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 no. Courage is just something within us that rises. Well, what I would say is I see that rising as a God thing the movement of the Spirit within us. I would go so far as to say the power of the Spirit within us. And when we can name that and claim that, that reminds us that we're not alone, that God truly is with us in the midst of all things, offering us power. Power. That power is what I am calling courage. So I might shift that definition a little bit we saw earlier. Courage is the God-given power within us to do something difficult or dangerous. The God-given power to do something difficult or dangerous. Now, the root of the word courage is core, and that's from an old Latin word for heart. To have courage meant to have the capacity to speak and act from your heart. And again, for me, I think of God's Spirit rising in us, empowering us to act from the, our heart, to act with love and compassion, to work for justice, to do these difficult and dangerous things, whatever they are. So what gets in the way of this? What stops our God-given courage from rising? Because we know that does happen. And of course, it's easy enough to say, well, fear stops us. But I want to be more specific. It can be hard circumstances in our life that stop us from being courageous. One thing after another thing after another thing goes wrong, and it gets harder and harder to see what's possible. It could be that what stops you are what other people are saying or doing around you. Maybe it's what they're saying or doing to you, or what they're saying or doing to others. This could be as simple as criticism and harsh judgment, but it could also be this bigger problem, the problem of bullying. It can be verbal abuse. It can be physical abuse. It can be emotional abuse. It can be all kinds of things that people do to one another. That 
can get in our way. Maybe this God-given courage doesn't arrive because we just get overwhelmed by this global village where there is so much going on and we feel like our words and our actions really can't possibly make a difference. But it also could be the mind-numbing culture that has us with all of our heads pointed at computer screens or into our little cell phones. And so we are disconnected from things. All of these things discourage us. Discourage, the heart of that word is courage. When we are discouraged, we find ourselves without courage. Well, what can help us then reconnect to this God-given courage, this power, I want to say that again, it's power within us, so that we can face things and choose amongst these difficult and dangerous things in our lives. In other words, when we are discouraged, how can we be encouraged? There's that root again inside that word. The most obvious thing, of course, to bring encouragement into our lives, I would say, is prayer. Jesus took time for prayer. He went off by himself, sometimes for extended periods of time, trying to connect with God, that source of courage, the source of the power that we see in his life. And if you're like me, prayer quite literally grounds me when I am in a place where I need to choose or do something difficult or dangerous. God encourages us through prayer, but I think we can also be a source of encouragement to each other. This is terribly important. Rather than be party to the voices of critique or pickiness or judgment, we can offer support and affirmation of what we know to be good and positive in those around us. Remember weeks ago when I said, the words, I love you, get lost when you say, I love you, but... Now, this is not to say, however, and I want to be clear here, that we ignore the things that we are really concerned about in those around us. We can't ignore when people are self-destructive, and we can't ignore when people are harming others. Sometimes that is exactly why we need courage. But this is to say that as we look for what is possible and affirm that honestly, we become, rather than a source of of discouragement in people's life, a source of encouragement. We affirm people rather than thinking somehow we know what's best for them. Encouraging each other gives rise to the best in all of us and makes us people of great courage, people with incredible power from God. So being courageous, power-filled people, does this mean that we run around all the time pulling people from burning cars and speaking before Congress? Not at all. Professor Brene Brown, who speaks and writes and is something of an expert on courage, speaks of ordinary courage, not the stuff of these heroic deeds and brave acts that make the news, but ordinary courage, the little acts of loving kindness and the truthful living in every moment of every day. Now, to me, this reminds me of that Tom Petty song that the guys sang at the beginning of church. You have just one life. Don't back down. Stand your ground. Do what's right. That takes ordinary courage. The Now Testament song, Brave. When it matters, speak up. Just let the words fall out, don't run, don't run, just stop holding your tongue. To do that takes ordinary courage. This is going to make us vulnerable, and that vulnerability is all the more reason that we need courage, and that power from God comes when we are vulnerable and open to it, and that cycle continues until we find that we truly can rely and trust that, and we can live transparently and truthfully. Like that great old Harry Emerson Fosdick hymn that we sang earlier, God of grace and God of glory, 
on your people, pour your power. Grant us wisdom. Grant us courage, ordinary courage, for the living of this hour and the next. May this be our prayer. Amen.